All right, y'all, we're getting supper started early today. We're making pot roast in the slow cooker, so I have an almost four pound beef roast. We're gonna put some potatoes, carrots, and onions in here, and I think I have a Lipton soup mix pack that we're gonna put on top with some salt and pepper. Yeah, I've got one. So we're just gonna shake that right on top, put some salt and pepper. Titus has gone this morning to pick up a baby bull. Well, I mean, I don't know if he's a baby baby, but he's not a big bull yet. He's gonna bring him by the house here before he takes him over to the pasture, so we're excited to see him. And I find we go by sound Yeah. Can you hear it? Yeah. Mm. Very good. The hand tail. Oh, and that's the dinosaur sound. Eagle. No, pterodactyl. Oh. Two, eagle, pterodactyl. Okay. It has these big wings so I get pterodactyl. Yeah. And the eagle swoops down to get the fish. Yeah, they swoop down to get the fish, huh? Yeah. Are you acting like a chicken? Oh, I see Ernest T. Oh yeah, we can see him really good. Look, he's swimming right there. You see him swimming? Yeah, so, I see her, Ernest T. He swam away, he saw us, huh? You wanna see the little bull? Yeah, I wanna see the real bull. Yeah, it's real, he's in the trailer. Oh. Hey there, Mr. Bull. What? How can you do that? He's part cow. I'll put on some classes about that and be like, all right, guys, that's what you're going to do it. When you want to communicate to your cattle, all you got to do is you got to get down in there and get down in the core, and then you want to bring it from within, and you want to go almost bullfrog. Wow, now you got it. Here she comes, Manny. She's gonna get you. Miss Turkey knows when feeding time is. He can't wait any longer, y'all. Where he's worried that a deer is gonna come and smash his pumpkin, his prize pumpkin. Yeah, this is my prize pumpkin. I know what will happen, and we'll be like, let's just get it Saturday. And then all of a sudden, Bambi's mama will come up tonight and wanna have an early pumpkin pie. I don't think it's gotten any bigger in several days now, so. Right. See if you can pick it up. No. Oh, Jonah's got it. That's a there good looking pumpkin right there. I don't care what nobody says. Ain't gonna be people out there says Titus, that's not a good looking pumpkin. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. We'll go sit it on the porch for now. Look at that.
So a lot of people can understand what we have to do is I buy a lot of these cattle really, really sick. They'll have pneumonia. They'll be really, really wormy. And then I get them well and stick them out here on, a, on the farm here on a big pasture. We just kind of buy a few at a time. I don't trade but about 50, maybe a year. Only reason I bought them two little Holsteins there, they heifers, and we got a Holstein sale that's not too far from here. And once I get them about a year from now, they ought to they ought to bring pretty good. But them other ones, they'll do pretty decent once I get them all straightened out. <laughs> is it just finished right now we're gonna make some okra fritters to go with the roast and I still have some of that Cheesecake Factory brown bread so we're just gonna have some of that I was gonna make cornbread but since we're gonna make these okra fritters we'll just have the brown bread with it instead of making cornbread too because you put a little bit of cornmeal in here a little bit of flour salt pepper and buttermilk and we're gonna put a little bit of paprika and some crushed red pepper flakes we'll go ahead and shake those in you can leave the paprika and the red pepper flakes out if you want to. I have tons and tons of okra, y'all. I mean, a lot of okra, so. Thinking about pickling some, that's why I got those cannon jars the other day. Put some salt and pepper. I already have my oil heated in the skillet here. So I'm gonna go with a cup of flour and half a cup of cornmeal. You can go all cornmeal if you want to. I just, I like to go with a little bit of a flour and cornmeal mixture. And then we'll put in buttermilk just until we get it. It depends on how much okra and stuff you have. I'll show y'all the, you know, how you want it to be. Okay, yes, that's gonna be enough. So we've got it coated in the flour and cornmeal mixture. Now we're just gonna start pouring the buttermilk. You want just enough so that you can, you know, form the fritters, like the little patties almost. Just like how we do squash fritters or squash cheese of pancakes, yes. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more buttermilk and we'll be good to go. And so you just fry these. I had it on medium, but it's been, it's been heated up for a little while now, so I turned it down in between medium and low. And we're just gonna drop little spoonfuls in here. They are not gonna be perfect shapes. I'm gonna try to make them in circles, but they're, they're gonna be rustic shaped fritters here. They are smelling good. Yeah, we love okra. I think everybody likes okra except Manly. He's not fond of it yet. Later on down the road, he might love it too. I'm not quite ready yet. I'm gonna turn the heat back up just a little bit because it cooled down when we put those in. Hard to screw three sons. Carve the roast beast. <laughs> yes, I'm carving the roast beast, everyone. I think he held one of those in the movie, too. Oh, yeah. If you were so wearing I a green shirt, it'd be on. Oh, yeah. Now that is a good one. Fantastic. 